you know what? There is literally temptation at every turn, isn't there? Look at that beautiful barrage. Check it out, for fuck's sake. Oh God, look at it all. Sweating, just look at it. Hey. There's my car. God bless her. I'm told it's pretty safe around here, and to be fair, it's so bloody remote. I'm off key. I'm off kilter. Like this boat is limited. Let's see if I can see you. It's an interesting old place, let me tell you. Quiet, bloody hell, apart from the cowbells that you can hear. Yeah, so we're heading up this barrage. I've got big weather coming in. I had to make a decision, like it's going to be Friday tomorrow and weekends, weekend, full stop anywhere. Um, so yeah, I'm just, it's not too bad here, but even close to the bank here, look, like, I'm in 40 foot odd. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's actually much more difficult than I anticipated. This boat is super loaded, and um, I'm trying not to lick my battery. I've already come a mile or so. Just having a mooch. I went over one bit that was like um, 38, 39 foot, even as far out as the middle. That point back there, that I've come round. That actual point comes out real shallow. But the rest of this is like you can see, it's looking more and more gorgy. Yeah, lovely. Quiet. But you know, the other thing is, if I've got rain coming, it's like a couple of three days of rain. I'm thinking, I want to really be staying here till the, you know, it's Friday tomorrow, so I want to be staying here till Saturday or Sunday at the earliest. So I thought, even if I just do a night in one spot tonight, see what I can see, because this is like one arm of it, and then it goes around the corner into the other arm. There's two bods um, up by the barrage. So this is 70 foot again. I'm not. Nick is, Nick is not liking this. <laughs> it's May, you know what I mean? They should be in the extremities. Um, when I turned up the other day, the, both the carp anglers at the rear the, were at either end. The, that end looks really good where the river comes in, but it's right in the car park by the slipway, and I can't imagine that. You just, I can just imagine it's fished all the time. Perhaps I'm tripping, but hey, 75 foot. Yeah, I mean, like I was, I was either going to come up here in these gorgy bits and like because you can fish across, so you've got double the margins to cover. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about that, um, especially if we've got big weather coming. I'm just cutting back across. Like it's narrow here, I can easily fish both margins, which is probably a good bet in it for the night. But the the um, I know for a fact that the weather is coming in tomorrow morning, so it's getting cloudier now. It's going to be a warm night, 10 degrees, which is the warmest night since I've been here. Um, so do you know what? It's all good in the hood at the minute. I am here. I've got rods left off this corner, right all up the middle of the lake, as far as i found, is over 100 foot. And I know these fish like deep water. I, I saw a video of a Czech bloke fishing here, would you believe, a long time ago in the spring. And I think he was probably fishing down to my right here somewhere where there's some fields in the background. Um, and the water was much higher. But out in front of me here, from as far out there, all the way out into the middle of the pond, which is a long way out, let me tell you, it's shallow, 37s, 38s, 40s. Um, and I know for a fact that these fish love it in 10, 15 plus meters, any time of the year. They always have done before they were pressured and they're quite pressured now, um, but that's because they're big and you can night fish here, I suppose. Um, I think there's lots of big perch and I've seen a few nice perch striking. But anyway, I've put the rods out, I've put all four out, very in depth, the car is about Oh, like round that corner and another mile I reckon to the car park. Um, I say a car park is a little slip when I've put the car there, hopefully it'll be alright, but you know this isn't like other parts of France. You know, this is remote. 
if you hear a car at night you're like oh, what's going on there then uh, anyway I'm up there a long way away from my rods but we've got rain coming in so you know, I've even got my little perch rod all ready to go I'm super keen, I've been for a swim I've had a wash, I've got changed I sort the rods out I've baited them up ah, yeah, anyway a few manila out there, a few peanuts mainly manila um, I'm only going to leave them out for a night and see how they go oh, Bert's popped up look Bless him, he's knackered. We've had a right day of it. We've been all over the place today, and the car's been <laughs> pitching and rolling. He's been getting thrown around. He's knackered. I've just fed him a big dinner. <sighs> and do you know what? I'm about to feed myself a big dinner. And it is silent here. Tonight is just going to be weird. I know it will be. Um, so quiet here, like friends, a friend of mine that came here actually had a bit of an anxiety attack and had to go. It was so quiet. <laughs> Several people have mentioned now you can hear your blood pumping around your body. It sounds quite noisy now, there's loads of birds and insects and stuff, but I know from the lake up the road, well, an hour away that I was fishing yesterday. Yeah, it's quiet. I have to sit and watch my phone, watch some YouTube or something, stop from going mad, or put the radio on. <laughs> Anyway, wish me luck. I deserve a car. It's been a, f <coughs> it's been a long day, a long day. And, uh, well, morning. Hope you can hear me over this rain. Quick catch up. It's ah, uh, oh, it's lovely times, isn't it? Look at it out there. Looks real good. The rods are all fishing. I was getting bleeps on one of them. I don't know which one it was, but it was only odd bleeps. So I suspect um, it was getting crayed. I was hoping it was liners, but I've no no bites. I've heard no carp. Not that that's a massive, uh, not that's a massive issue as of yet. But anyway, I was. I'll give it today. It's a bit of a force to give it today, and tonight probably with this rain. It's been brewing for. Uh, I kept looking at the weather. Kept looking at the weather, and yeah, it's been coming in, um, and it's here for a few good few days as well. Uh, which was after the reason, not just the impending weekend, but also the impending rain. I wanted to get set up somewhere. Um, so yeah, in a minute I'm going to have another coffee, number three. Uh, I'll be trannies. Right back. Yeah, you're not missing a lot, mate. You go back to bed. Um, yeah, I'll catch up with you. Hopefully there's something that'll happen. Or I didn't hear no carp last night. I wasn't awake all night. I'd had a half bottle of wine and a big barbecue, and it sent me off to lovely sleep. But it was so quiet here. My God, it you know yesterday evening before dark, it was just deathly quiet. Um, and it's nice here. I'm up in the woods. I've got just endless woods behind me. Uh, the boar are obviously about. Bert woke, Bert woke me up at three o'clock. Heard a big noise. Something was going on. Um, but yeah, they were probably coming down out of the woods, could smell the lovely barbecue. Uh, yeah, that's it for the time being. I'm going to chill. Hopefully uh, one of these rattles off today. If it doesn't, I'm not too worried. I'm going to have some bacon and eggs and generally sort my style of life out and have a little think about my options. Um, and I'll catch up with you later. Ah, uh, morning campers. Flip. I would say something a bit about what a night. Jesus, look at the state of me. I've had very little sleep. Look at poor Bert. He's not looking very happy either. Look out there. It's f***ing disgusting. Seven degrees. And that's gone up. You ain't going to believe where I am. This is my old haunts on the River Seine. Like south east of Paris. How have I ended up here, you ask? Well... Oh man, it's been a long day. I drove four and a half hours north from where I was. It was when I left it was six degrees, then it dropped down to four degrees. I was going through the hills. I went up then through Claremont Ferrand, all the way back up to the big lake that I, I first dropped in on. Um, it Sorry, I don't know what that was. I thought someone was coming herring around the corner. Um, yeah, so I went back there, um, 
four and a half hour drive north tripled the daytime temperature so when I got back to the big parky place it was 19 and a half degrees lovely time but of course it's Saturday on the lake the rowers everywhere bivvies ever when I say bivvies everywhere bivvies everywhere it's not a surprise while I was sat there I was doing a bit of research like it did a it did a, a commoner just under 34 kilos in an enduro back in the last year it's like it's whack of soup do you know what I mean there's giant carp there um so I've got a really good feeling I'm going to be going back there very soon, but everything's crashing in on me, and I'll tell you why. Why have I, well, you know, the plan was, I had till the 28th. I had to go home on the 28th, go and pick my little girl up on the 29th. Um, so I was all bit, being all pretty relaxed and stuff, and then I got an email saying there'd been a mix-up, and like I've now got my little girl for the first week. And that instantly knocks four five realistically days off me trip which I'm not best happy about but it is what it is you can't odds it um, so that up my timings that I had sort of in the bank I was thinking oh, I can waste a day or two here I can afford to have a couple of days there you know anyway so right, I'm a bit freaked out I'll tell you in a minute and um, so of course I've gone back to the big lake Right, I could have stayed there, do you know what I mean? It's Sunday tomorrow, and I know everybody would have gone home, because that's what the French are like. There was one Dutch car that was still there, went on my way down, he was there, but I couldn't work out which one he was. There were so many bivvies there, it was a joke. I could have stayed there and fished tonight, but can't get the car anywhere near you. So, and it's shady around there, I can't really describe it. It's like all new and like it's been manufactured, but it's something just not right, like they've moved in all the real bad people from out the area. Anyway, it was weird, so I thought, there's no point me staying here on the off chance these people are going home tomorrow, Sunday, then doing, like now I've got to go home Thursday, so like I would have done Monday night, I've got a book in Bert to get him vaccinated, all these things you just don't think about, but of course I do, I'm planning ahead every day. Um, so it's eating into me fishing. Now I'm going home, I've got two weeks to get the boat on the river, on a mooring, and all cleaned up and ready for the season, plus baiting up, plus going out with my mate tail and looking at all the bits, and we've got so much to do, and then before, I've got like the first month of the season, and then I'm off to the river lot with my girlfriend, fishing off a boat, which would be mega, I'm going to film that for sure. Um, so where does that leave me now? Well, I want to go and see my Belgian mates. I've got to line it up, I'm meant to be filming there, possibly filming there, in a couple of months, or a month's time. So I'm going, I'm going to go to Belgium. So I thought, right, when I left Midish France, it was saying five and a half hours to get just above Paris. And I was thinking, Jesus, it's never ending. This trip, I've done some serious driving. That car's just been incredible. Um, uphill and down Dale, it's just, you wouldn't believe it. Like I've rinsed it. I'm already over, over a thousand miles and it'll be well plus 2000 plus when I get home. Um, plus the tolls, plus the fuel, but hey, it's what it is. It's been, it's been a lovely time so far. So the plan was, where am I going to stop on the way? And I'm looking at the route, you know, it's, it was into a part of France I've never been into before. So the route in and out, I've never really, but looking on the way out, I thought, well, actually, it's, it comes very close to this area. I thought, I'll drop in on the old spots on the Seine. If you don't know it, it's just a magic area. This is all the history bit where, you know, before the likes of me fishing here, the Belgians fished here in the late 80s and had all them all that fantastic fishing at the time. I mean, in between years, most of them have been nicked, but there's been lots of floods in the last few years which should have repopulated this river really, or certainly this part of the river really well. So I, I keep coming interested to coming back for a look. Um, and I've been here for an hour or so now, driving down the old tracks which are all overgrown. And then I found a way in from the other end. Um, I almost given up because like the potholes are just incredible. Um, and it's been a proper palaver anyway. I found my way in to what we called the Iron Bridge, famous old swim, uh, and like where it's lakes joining onto the river. Always been mega, mega spot. And um, there was two or three French blokes in one corner where before the before the path closed up on me and when I went round the other way there is you can probably hear the music now still I've driven back away I was disgusted but there's a group of lads there Eastern European lads like marching around the swim they've got the loudest system playing the shittest music I've ever heard and they've got a chainsaw you hear the chainsaw they're cutting down trees and making a f***ing massive fire <coughs> and they're everywhere and it's just a f disgrace to be honest with you and it's not how I remember the place I mean there was always rubbish the French always leave rubbish I don't know why I end up taking half of their shit with me but it's like there's piles of it now just 
piles of bags and that and nobody takes it away it's disgusting um, so yeah I came around the other side of the river to I thought well I'll just cast across you know I'm used to fishing I've got big leads I can wang sort of eights across and put big back leads on and uh, I got around there and I'm looking straight at the party of they were marching around the swim like Hitler and like, oh, it was just savage so I thought do you know what I'm knackered it's getting dark soon I've been on the road since oh it's been a long old day I've driven a lot, you know, a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long old day. Anyway, so where do I go now? I could just crash out somewhere around here, but I'm just not really feeling it. I might as well just, while I'm still in one piece, I might as well go to the canal I know, above Paris, which is a couple of hour drive, I reckon, from here. Um, probably near a free but I'll be there by about 10ish and I know it's quiet there I mean really quiet there I can pull the car up and I was going to do a barbie I can do that tomorrow <coughs> and then probably put the rods out tonight if not it doesn't really matter um, and tomorrow I get up to my syndicate lake in Belgium I'm going to do three or four nights there get Bert booked in the day before to get his stuff done at the vet for his passport um, and probably have a th few nights on the syndicate and then maybe a night on one of the other lakes um, and catch up with my friends because I don't really know when it's going to be when I'm really going to be out I mean the, the talk is I might be popping out to do some filming but who knows it's all up in the air so come on back well I ended up here on the old big canal next to an old grain silo oh coffee coffee I love you you are many needed this morning I only managed to get one rod out it was late, well late by the time I got to bed about half past one I reckon hey bro we were chase time oh god what a, what a drive yesterday but do you know what? It was magnificent here last night. Like literally magnificent. The uh, the nightingales and the frogs and that. It was just going off here last night. And yeah, what a day's driving yesterday, my God. But anyway, um, that's the nature of the beast, I'm afraid. That's, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, I couldn't do it all the time, I'm just not that rich, <laughs> which is why more or less all the time you have to have someone with you just to split the cost really. Oh, oh here we go. Yeah, I look like someone beats me with a stick this morning. I need to shave as well. There. <laughs> so yeah, what's the plan stand today? Well, we know what we're doing now. I know I've got to go on Thursday. It's now Sunday, which is ah, oh, I really compressed my plans, but yeah, Belgium today, quite a short jog for me, which is really good, and then uh, a couple of nights on the syndicate and a night elsewhere, I think, and then home, get Brucey seen by the vet, jobs are good, and uh, the more I think about it, the more I'd quite like to come back out to the big lake next week. But I'm going to see, time permitting, I've got honey for a few days, uh, my daughter, um, and I never miss that, so as soon as I've had a little one, there's every chance, it might be a return, we'll see. Right, I'll speak to you later. Plans change, spanners get thrown in the works, it's been a weird old trip, but this is just the way, nature of the beast. Um, so yeah, Belgium. Let's hope I can catch a few there before I go home. Um, it's one of them things at the minute. I've got so much going on. I'm normally I can't I can't bear going home, and at the minute I can't wait to go. Home. <laughs> Life's a funny old thing, I tell you. So anyway, yeah, much to do. So yeah, I'm going to sit here, have some breakfast, be relaxed about it, and then uh, and then chuck it in the car once more. and go off for a few nights with my friends in Belgium. Hopefully we can get a couple there to show you. I'll see you soon. All right. Whew. 
I've made the drive. I'm now at my syndicate in Belgium. It's a lovely lake, big lake. In the wind, Sunday, everyone's gone home. But yeah, there's bits of wood out there. Anyway, there's fish in this bay. They're all over the bay. I've been seeing the odd one roll. Um, and I've got a rod out, so fingers crossed. I'll keep the camera nearby. I'm going to get another rod made up and get it out quick and see what happens. So today is a uh, looks bloody good for it. I'm a bit late, but I've missed most of the morning scene. But I'll get a little bit of bait going in this afternoon and get some rods sorted, and hopefully it'll all be lovely times. Oh, Bert's having a, a lapse out. <laughs> going on but a rocket ship barely keep up with him <laughs> hey, hey. Too small, Wes. He's a 40 pounder, isn't he? Close to right. <laughs> Wicked. I'm sure the other side is close to you. Typically, getting towards evening, and now they're starting to feed. Like, um, yeah, you didn't see the last one. This is a male. He's well it's bumpy. Oh. Last one was a 20, this is 30 or close to, I would have thought. <sighs> It'll do, he's a lovely one. Typically. Anyway, it looked good. I literally just put out about 20 pouchfuls of bait, rechucked the rod after the 43, it rattled off, 20 pounder. As I was doing that one, the other one went, and there you go. <laughs> it was like they started to mass right in the corner, and there was loads of them, but small ones, 20 pounders. I even see, um, I saw a big common. I caught a big common, but I saw a, a, a common which definitely weren't that one. Um, at this stage, I'm not sure whether I've caught that common before, the 40, 40 pounder, or whether I've um, uh, caught it like later in the year spawned out I had a 35 a few years ago which was of that ilk but we'll see um, so yeah what's happened right um, I got here drove from France winds blowing into the swimming pool what they call the swimming pool on the lake it's like a shut the shallows basically like it's a uh, I can walk out 40 yards and then it slowly drops away to about 15 foot but Essentially there was lots of black shapes on the shallow and the shallow is about three to five feet. I was at the, about the limit of my waders when I waded out, so I waded one left. The lake's deep and clear and rich, um, but for some reason it's quite a harsh environment and, they, and the fish don't seem to last. Um, but either way, first bite, did -li -li -li, I'm getting lots of liners. Um, and, and to be honest, I dozed off, and then when I woke up, like I woke up to the rod bent right round, and I ran over and pressed the button, the start button. I had the camera on the tripod, trying to be professional and that, you know, and uh, played it in anyway. Forty pound, a forty-three pound common, lovely times, nineteen kilo. I'll take it. Um, I weighed it because here, uh, Wes, my friend Wes, and Dirk, uh, my other mate, they like to keep a record. I think there's a, a, at the moment. Don't quote me, but somewhere in the region of 70 fish between 30 and 35 or bigger. Which is a nice stock for a lake of this size and uh, and they're getting bigger quickly. So yeah, I was really happy with that one. If it's one I've not caught, double bonus. Like, um, But yeah, I followed it up very quickly with a mirror of 30 pound or thereabouts. Maybe 28, maybe 29, maybe 30, whatever, it don't matter. Um, I should be weighing them. If they look any of the bigger ones that are like 30 to 35, I will weigh because the boys like to have a, 
they're trying to keep a record um but yeah so it's just you know as far as i'm concerned that's justified my trip a 40 pound common i'm very happy with that so all i've done is move the rod straight out in front of me where it's eight or ten foot probably on the shelf i weighed it out to the limit of my waders roughly i don't know 20 pouches of boilies and a couple of cod balls over the top like really the, the, we make such a thing in the uk about the way you fish and how you you know and the truth is like um i said years ago you know you used to look at the 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 really pressured lakes in england um but every year there's always one youngster that's catching them all um which says to me like it doesn't really matter who's fishing there there's always such you know they get caught regardless whether terry earns fishing there dave lane me whoever jim big jim whoever they get caught regardless somebody is always catching them a bit better than everyone else and you think it's the anglers you think oh they've got to be superheroes well of course they ain't you know you're fishing for a cart for christ's sake it's hardly the smartest animal in the world um like my mate mick says you know they eat and they breed and that's pretty much the prerequisite so whether i was fishing for these carp or it was but or whoever the result's going to be very similar. Someone's going to end up catching more than everyone else. Usually it's the someone that's pretty much keener than everyone else. Um, so what I'm saying is like, you, you know, it's very easy to say like, I've turned up in Belgium, I've caught a 40, but you have to look at it realistically. And most people don't in the fishing world. They try and make it into more than it actually is. I've come fishing, I've caught one. It happens to be a big one. Well, it's going to be in it because they're the greedy fat f um, But people won't tell you that. So anyway, um, I've caught him, I've put him back, and then I've caught another one, put him back. Uh, and now it's gone a bit quiet, but it was going to anyway. Like I'd caught him out of like two or three foot of water on the end of a lovely wind. The wind's still the same. It's a bit rainy, a bit lovely. Um, my mate Wes has popped around. I've had a couple of beers. I'm, like, I'm no drinker, so I'll be sleeping well tonight. And um, yeah, I've moved the rods from sort of, if you imagine that, they're round that way to the left on the shallows uh, I've left one on the shallows which is a bit deeper than the other ones I can actually feel a drop like, I don't know probably four or five foot anyway I've put like a kilo of boilies around him and um, the rods out in front I've waded out to my limit and flicked them over red cast probably 30 turns or something you know close and they go down crack there's no weed growing there and I've put a couple of kilo over those two um, and we'll see what happens not rocket science is it you know um i was gonna have a barbecue but i just can't be asked i'll have a toasted sandwich same as i had for breakfast this morning at the canal um toasted sandwich sriracha mayonnaise sauce which is quite spicy and nice um some cheddar cheese and some chorizo and chops are good and um before i go i might as well Show you me swim, the rods are out for the night. There's a few cod balls out there. I've already like, uh, I don't know, I'm at least half the way through a bag of, uh, a bag of 20s there and I've done quite a few out of that bucket already. It don't take long. Um, so anyway, yeah. It's all good in the hood. Well, that to my friends <laughs> is what you call big cart weather. That's a nice one, that one. As you can see, oh, oh I have got one rod left. <laughs> Jesus. It's been, um, how can we say? Oh, you're getting up, are you? Lazy little weasel. <laughs> oh man, what a night. Oh my God. Getting wet. Oh, cold. Right, let's get my together and I'll speak to you in a bit. Right, yeah, commons. Always keep the commons here because they're rare. And this is only a petit, he's quite clearly been spawning. But it's just as a log for my friend who likes to keep a log of the commons. <sighs> nice 
nice long one. Can't work out whether he's an old one or a young one, but either way he's a lovely one. Oh yeah, he's a fatty. It's getting weighed up. Got to weigh all the bigger ones now. But he's a belter, look at him. He's 38 this one. But he looks 38 and always oh, as fat as a pig, which is a good sign. I've only seen small ones coming in the edge looking spawny. So to see and catch a couple of the bigger ones. Oh, he's stout this one, isn't he? Oh, that's more like it, Belgian beauty. That's what we've come all this way for. A thousand miles to start getting into a few, but that's pretty much how it goes on these sort of trips. I ain't moaning about it. He's a belter, absolute belter. I'm really happy with this one. They're coming on your leaps and bounds. This lake's going to be absolutely full of giants in a few years. Oh, you fat flip. Have a quick look at the other side. Oh, he's fat as a pig, this one. I'd like a cut of steels on this one. Ah, oh. oh, what a night. I'm absolutely blown away. Super busy, super fishing, really. Flat out all night. Oh. But suitably unimpressed, as usual. And I'm suitably wet. <laughs> Let's get this one back. The fish are still in the bay. Hopefully there's a bigger one on the cards. Here's a nice one. Nice looker anyway. I'm sure I've seen him at much, much bigger weight. Oh. He'll do, as they say. It's real windy, so it's hard to... Look at his goblet. Lovely old cod. Super carp. I've only had one today, my mate Al popped in, bought us a roll and a bit of chat and a catch up and stuff, you know, plans for the rest of the year and what's going on and whatnot. Um, so yeah, like the afternoon went a bit quick for me. Um, I had one bite while I was here, 20 pounder, you've seen it. Um, and that was it, the, the, the bay is, there's no carp in the bay. And the rest of this lake's very deep, like, I mean like 30 foot, 25, 30 foot, it's not uncommon. And I don't know where they've gone. When Al turned up earlier, he said he'd seen one. He said, oh, I just saw one, 30 yard out. Then I had a take and he said, I think that was the one I saw jump out. <laughs> I think that was the one I saw jump out. So wherever they've gone, they're not here. But I'll be honest with you, it looks so incredible out there. Like literally the wind is licking. It's been absolutely, you know, I'm on an empty crystal clear gravel pit full of big carp. There's nobody else here fishing and um, the wind is just pounding onto the shallows and it's hit 19 degrees. I mean, come on, it's May time as well. It should be smackadelic. Yeah, I'll keep your fingers crossed. The two bites I had last night were off my right hand spot. Which, let's take that and try. Ooh. Chicken's cooking nicely. Right, so, give you a bit of, a bit of a clearer overview perhaps. Right, last night's fish were off this corner but out towards the barrels, the black barrels. Like it's quite shallow off the tip of that corner, but it does drop down to about this is the big problem I've got is algae, lots of it on my lines. Horrible stuff, right? So yeah, anyway, it comes off that corner. So it comes off that corner, drops down until it gets in line with them big black barrels, about 12 foot. Um, I had two bites last night in the night, they both came from there. I thought the fish had gone up to the other end of the lake, up that way, and I suspect they'd gone. 
up to the other bit, which is quite shallow, which is up right up in them houses. If you look through, this one's being built up the end there. There's a lot of lake, but anyway, that's where I reckon they are. But that said, if they are up there, they should be should be hungry. I mean, the one this morning, that big um, original one, and was crapping out lots of stuff. He'd been troughing. So I suspect they'll be creeping back down. I've been like, I've only been here a couple of nights, but I've already done five Kia Manila, so that's just trickling it in. So I suspect, um, you know what they're like when they get a bit of a taste for it, and they've had a pretty hectic spawning for a few hours. I expect they're hungry. And uh, apart from a few crayfish, it's not, you know, it's a funny lake, this is deep and rocky, and I mean, a pucker place to fish, but not a great environment for the carp, if that makes sense. Um, it's quite harsh. I think it's quite a harsh place to live. Um, Let's swim from a bit of a different angle. There's old Bruce over there. It's lovely in here. Car in your swim, visitors, lovely weather. This is what it's all about. So anyway, let's hope one of these trickles off tonight. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Like I'm, you know. If it was in, if I was in England fishing somewhere a bit more pressured, and but you know clear, stock a big carp like this, they'd go and I'd be gone. But I just can't help but think, you know, there's nobody else here. They could well be about, could well be some about. So anyway, it's barbecue time. I'm gonna have a barbecue. I'm gonna have a really nice night tonight, relaxed. Try and get some sleep. Um, up early in the morning take Bert to the vets which is literally a couple of roads away and she speaks English is perfect um, pay me 30 whatever euros so he can go back to England what a con um, every time I bring him it costs me a hundred quid like even the tunnel I pay for a car and five passengers only ever me but to take my dog 20 quid each way plus the t the money I oh, just probably I hate feeling like I'm being robbed you know what I mean anyway yeah barbecue is gonna be much lovely I've got a open a bottle of Corbiers like five bottles of Corbiers I think I bought in Lidl or somewhere like that and it was like eight or nine euros <laughs> and I've been just drinking a glass or two of wine every evening why not I'm on holiday um, so yeah that's me swim it's looking very nice there is apparently an angler down the other end around that corner and down there somewhere um, and yeah wish me luck Well, morning campers. I've uh, I've moved to the other end of the pit. I had absolutely nothing last night, so I've come up the other end this morning. The wind's almost spun a bit. It's not. It's not. It's a bit early still yet, but um, I just listen to the birds, and that's beautiful. But what we've got here is all of the lakes. I'm guessing bream population. Here they come. Here comes one. I can't see it as usual. This screen is a bit of a liability, which really makes my filming awful. I've got to get used to just pulling the eyepiece out. I'm a bit of a novice, but they're actually, for Breen, they're proper spawning. But, like the rest of the lake, this end is deep. There's a bar that cuts the lake in half out there that runs across from this side to that side. Yeah, there's Mr. Breen, look. There's many of them. A couple of them are quite big. And the last thing I'm interested in on this pit, but anyway, yeah, so there we are, so spin round. It's not much of a, it's about the only bit you can fish up this end of the lake, it's all private houses, but it's lovely. Cars behind me, Bert snuffling, I'm just about to take him to the vets, and um, yeah, just about to take him to the vets and then uh, get him re passported and ready for home. And, uh, I should be back in 10 minutes or so and then start getting the rods out. All right, look the part up here, I've got to say, they will bring spawning. But I suspect that they're back down there on the wind. It's really warmed up today, like really warmed up. So, yeah, so, sorry, keep cutting myself off. So, last roll of the dice, home in the morning. Uh, a bit sooner than a plan, but hey ho, just as the weather gets great, 
Oh well. Anyway, I can always come back out in a week or two, I think. But let's get home. Oh, I'm going to move anyway for tonight. Probably back down on the wind. I'm going to go and have a look for them. Um, quick bit of shopping. Get some cold drinks because we're out of everything. And yeah, off in the morning. Last roll of the dice. What a lovely evening to end on, eh? Yeah, it's been a it's been a, a great trip. Like they always are. There's another cup. You wouldn't believe what's happened. Like I've been re I've moved up to the other end today. Couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. Crystal clear, but today was different. It was much much hotter. I've even got caught the sun a bit, <clears throat> and the wind swung me around back into this bay that I was fishing originally, and it was like licking in here. Proper diamond day, you know, glistening crystal clear water and I thought they've just got to be in that sh in them shallows they've just got to be like there's not a carp on this planet that wouldn't be on on the end of those conditions anyway I've moved back down here <clears throat> I haven't seen anything you know it's been windy and the wind has just died off and I've seen five or six in the last I'm gonna try and zoom in because like it's typical where they are as well like, <clears throat> right if you bear with me just for a second Right. Zoom this thing in, mofo. Right, let's see if I can get the right. There's a bar up the other end that pretty much splits the lake in half. Let's say that. Let's describe it like that. It's like a road. Almost cuts the lake in two. But and there's the. Oh, you can't see it from here. There's a boy that marks the middle of it out there. But you, there's no swims anymore that even get remotely close to it. Um, so apart from being able to fish, right, we'll sit and watch this because I've just seen like I've seen half a dozen in two minutes. I've been wondering where they'd gone, and I was looking across at that far margin earlier. You'll see from the earlier bit of footage, I can cast to where they are. But I think, I think that most of the ones I'm seeing <clears throat> are this side of the of the very shallow bar in which case I can't cast to them and if I was going to cast to them they would definitely cut me off but yeah I've <coughs> it's been interesting to say the least typically just as I'm getting into it and just as the weather's coming right for it for a few days like I'm I'm off home um, but that's fishing like you know I don't I'm, I'm not, I don't feel anything about it really I think oh well a bit of a wasted opportunity but I can come back so I'm just looking forward to the next time. I've got so much to do. As soon as I get home, it's going to be flat out, sorting the boat ready for the river season um, <clears throat> and possibly finding the time to get out for a short trip. I don't know yet. We'll see. But um, yeah, it's just typical. I've been looking and looking and that was one then, I think. <clears throat> right over, just out to the left of the shop. You wouldn't have, wouldn't have seen it. But yeah, the bit you're looking at, basically towards that white, whatever it is, I don't know what it is it's probably a big garden brolly with a cover on it but yeah <clears throat> out towards that area i mean impossible to cast from here anyway but because of the like the nature of this lake it's all private you know all the gardens is there's only one swim down that end which is just a vacant plot that will get sold sooner or later and then you won't be able to fish down there at all unless you live there it'll be a completely wild like different place in a few years time um there's less and less angling bank space which makes it really difficult <clears throat> especially with the fact it's clear and deep and stuff it's quite challenging I, i'm really enjoying it um but yeah i'll be i'll obviously be looking forward to coming back here uh, i might bring the kids back in the summer holidays for a few days here camp on the point take them water skiing and stuff it, it'd be a nice trip um and yeah apart from that hopefully i'll get to a few two or three days um, thrown in for good measure somewhere along the line. You can always make time, can't you, when you want to get do a bit of fishing. So yeah, I'll be coming back soon enough. I've got a short jog in the morning, <coughs> hour and a half back to Calais, and then a couple of hours the other side. Um, I should be home 
by this time tomorrow. Um, I'm starting on the next. It's all right. Try not to knock the camera. I've got Bert chewing on my arm at the moment. He's very lively. Oh, just calm down, come on. <laughs> right, that's it. Typically, as soon as I put a camera on, I'm not going to see anymore. I'll um, I might as well turn this off. And uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you in the morning. Hopefully, 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 there's something to show you. Um, but I haven't just seen what I've been seeing. Mm, I'm not. Oh, what was that? That was something out there. I don't know if that was a. That's right in front of me. It's probably a chicken, but I didn't see it. I just looked up and saw rings. <clears throat> but it's in the right zone, so on the edge of the shallows, whatever that was. Yeah. Well, I don't want to turn it off. I'm all into it now. <laughs> right. Wish me luck. Hopefully, I'll uh, keep hoping that, like a greedy egg eater, I'll come back and I'll snaffle one. In, but. Oh, something else out there. Hmm, interesting. Right, I've got to go.